Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with John Hoffman of Cyber Optics. We're going to talk today about wafer bump inspection. John, as we go forward into shrinking down to the next nodes, as we move into advanced packaging, wafer bumps are becoming much more important. What's changed? Why are they now suddenly part of everything? And, and what do we have to think about as we do the inspection? What's happening is, you know, everyone wants to make their processor smaller. Everything wants to fit more capability into smaller footprints mm -hmm. and they want to reduce size and packaging of these semiconductors in the past has taken up a lot of, a lot of volume. And so they have put a lot of the packaging technology actually into the front end, right? So they're moving some of these OSAT processes, things that they would do to protect these chips. And actually they're pushing that into the, into the front end. They're putting conformal, some places are putting conformal coatings on their chips right now and, and protecting the chips from the environment, adding those protections in. And then the other, other fact that's driving this is chiplets, right? So because the circuits are getting so large and so complicated, they're, they're, de they're segregating that out into these smaller chips. And, and so now you want to package all that together in as small a package as possible. And for all these reasons, they're putting bumps on silicon and then directly attaching silicon to other silicon. And the back-end semiconductor packaging inspection market is a market we've been in now for five plus years. And that market is still robust. It's still growing, but a lot of that technology that is in that market is now getting pushed into this, what we've been calling mid-end. And these bumps are, are basically connections between these two chips, right? Or between multiple chips. You really want to be able to say, this is where the current is going to be flowing between the chips. Yeah, exactly. So what in the past would have been a, a packaged unit with a, a, a lead heading out onto a circuit board. Now they're, they're trying to connect the die directly to each other. And they want to do that, you know, with, by using as small a space as possible, as least volume as possible. And so they're doing that with, with, with these small bumps and then they're marrying these, uh, these silicon directly to each other, pack, you know, laying them on top of each mm -hmm. other, small wafers, pieces, two pieces of silicon and mating them together so that they have that electrical and physical contact um, and to keep them mated while they, they go on and get more packages around them, you know, downstream. So a way to think about this is they're taking uh, things that in the past would have been done by the back end community and pushing those processes closer to the front end. And so they, they still need those inspection capabilities in this mid end, where that's what we're calling the market. As you do this, you've got to basically connect these bumps exactly together, right? So any differences in terms of height, in terms of, uh, uh, something missing out of the bump because it didn't print right, that can cause a, an issue in terms of reliability. That becomes the big question. What are your critical measurements that you need to make such that you know that when you take this die and ma marry it to this die in some process downstream that they will in fact mate together properly, that you'll have the 1000 possible connections between those all uh, electrically solid, physically solid, because you're, you're using that also as in some cases, you're using that as kind of the mortar between these two pieces, right? The, the glue that's holding them together. What happens then is we have critical measurements of interest. So the, the biggest measurements of interest are coplanarity and bump height. So are all of these bumps uh, aligned consistently? You don't, you, don't, you don't want massive variability between these bumps. So give us an idea about how big these bumps really are. What are we looking at in terms of size? anywhere from 20 micron diameter to 200 micron diameter. And then the pitch, the distance between the bumps is uh, anywhere from 40 microns to, well, I mean, I, I guess we've seen some where they're a millimeter. Um, that, that's a little unusual. So as you go through a fairly large chip these days at an advanced node, how many bumps are you actually inspecting? Millions per wafer. You know, so, so these bumps that we're talking about inspecting, in our mid-end systems, they're actually inspecting the wafers. And the wafers will have a million to 10 million bumps on them. There's, there's been talk about 100% inspection on these bumps. Is that even possible? Absolutely. I mean, we believe so. We, we are, we've demonstrated this on um, to several potential customers that we can do 100% inspection of these bumps. It's, it's challenging. It's not easy. It's taken us a, a couple of years to get to the point where we're able to do that. 
Um, but we, at this point, we have the technology mature enough that we're able to measure 100% of the bumps. You've got a lot of data coming out of that because you are doing so much inspection. If you're talking millions of bumps, you've got lots and lots of data. How do you go through that? How do you find out what's going to be a problem, what isn't going to be a problem, what's a latent defect in, in one and what's acceptable? There's multiple steps in this process uh, where there's massive amounts of data reduction occurring. And so at the very first process, very first step, we have the, these high, very high resolution cameras collecting data at you know, hundreds of frames per second. And uh, from that, we generate uh, a bunch of height data and, and 2D inspection data. Uh, and we pass that off to the OEM. So by OEM, I mean, you know, we, my group makes the sensors and we sell the sensors to OEMs who then integrate these sensors into material handling systems. And, and we're in multiple different markets. So, so in the mid-end market, uh, you know, we have uh, our OEMs are dealing with and creating the wafer handling systems and the, the various material handling systems, the vacuum chucks, they're, they're responsible for all that. So we generate this massive amount of data. We, we generate a bunch of height data and 2D data that we pass on to the OEM. Now it's up to the OEM software to figure out how to reduce that further. And we collaborate a lot with these people. Um, and so what we've done with them and some of our OEMs is we've proposed a number of summary measures that go along and we've given them summary measure algorithms that go along with these, with these height maps. So we'll, we'll pass them a height map and then we'll also pass them an algorithm that will say, hey, let's take this height map, let's find all the bumps. And for each bump, we're gonna give you five measurements of that bump that characterize that bump. It'll be the, the height of that bump uh, above the substrate. It'll be the XY position of that bump. And it might be the diameter of that bump, right? So, so there might be four numbers for each bump that we pass on to, um, to the OEM. And now it's up to the OEM and the customer to say, all right, now customer, how, how can we further compress this data? Because if you're gonna have um, 50 million data points per wafer, that might be too much data for you to store. Is there a way for, you know, what, what kind of, what kind of metrics are important for you and for your process that you need to store long-term so that you can understand like how your process is changing over time. So what happens as the bump density increases? Uh, companies like Intel are now talking about going down into the angstrom uh, range. Will the current technology be able to uh, detect all this stuff? Will they be able to see all the anomalies that you may, and outliers that you may try and find? So, so we need to be clear about, about these measurements, right? So the angstrom comments, that's talking about like the logic circuits and the logic gates. And that's not what we're inspecting. We're not capable of inspecting down to that type of resolution. We're using optical sensors. The spatial resolution of our sensors are three micron spatial resolution. So we can easily inspect features that are like eight pixels across in that. So to like 25 microns, we can easily inspect features of that size. In mid-end, where we're looking at bumps, like the, the way they're getting I.O. off of the chips, that's the size of features they're at right now. In the 20 micron, there are some people pushing down to the 10 micron size. And so what that does is, you know, if, if you go from 20 microns down to 10 microns, uh, all things being equal, we have to go from a 3 micron resolution to a 1.5 micron spatial resolution. And so on a 300 millimeter wafer, we're gonna to have to quadruple the amount of data that we collect. And so that becomes a big challenge because you know, if, if I'm gonna quadruple the amount of data I collect, the customer doesn't want it to take four times as long. So how do we accomplish that? Well, we accomplish that with bigger cameras, faster cameras, uh, better material handling. You know, All of those things come into play um, to try to keep the speed up. To try to What's the difference with reflectivity when you're dealing with a material like silicon carbide versus bulk silicon? With silicon carbide, ends up being uh, somewhat specular. Silicon ends up being highly specular. There, there's a difference because of the silicon carbide target, targets, you can get uh, some diffuse return. And the silicon, polished silicon is basically acting like a mirror. And so we, for our mid-end product line, we have the capability of inspecting both diffuse and specular surfaces. And so what we would do in a situation like that is we would just uh, adjust the lighting levels and adjust the channels and make sure that we're getting the right signal in the right channels and then combine them all after the fact. A one way to think of it is as a multi-mode sensor. Like we were able to measure specular surfaces and diffuse surfaces. We have these in independent channels and we can combine all that into a single height map that we 
and 2D image that we then present to the, or to the OEM, right? Who can then create the algorithms to ex exploit that information for whatever interest the end user is interested in. As we move into finer and finer geometries, do those bumps get smaller, um, shorter? Uh, how does that change? Both. They're getting smaller and they're, they're getting shorter. Everyone wants, you know, if you can get them smaller and shorter, you can make the die smaller as well and, and still have the amount, same amount of I.O. coming out. If you shrink the feature size by half and you, you shrink the, uh, the inner bump spacing by half, well, that's going to require us to collect twice as much data or four times as much data, right? And so the, our challenge is to just kind of keep up with that, every, everything shrinking, keeping up with sensors that can resolve down at the finer and finer levels and keep up with the speed of the, of the fab. And from an algorithm standpoint, your signal to noise ratio actually goes down on each new node that you're going to, right? Well, if that, that's the case if you stay fixed with a fixed sensor, but you know, if, if the nodes shrink by 50% and we have a, a sensor with twice the amount of resolution, then we have basically the same amount of signal, but we have you know, four times as much data to process. We've, we've demonstrated the ability to kind of keep up with this, um, with these you know, node changes. Uh, we, we've been through a number of these node changes in the SMT world, you know, as they move from metric, you know, this metric 0402 to metric 0201 to metric 01005. I mean, they're, they're getting down to components that they're placing on circuit boards that are hundreds of microns in size. And so that's required us to continually refine our, our, our algorithms to, to get them faster and then, or to beef up our hardware, you know? So we, we have multiple uh, ways we can attack these problems, right? One is to just try to optimize the algorithms to make them faster than they already are, which, which is something we've done, uh, or just put them on beefier hardware and, and just double the hardware speed, you know? It, because the whole electronics world is moving to smaller and smaller, we get to exploit that in our sensors, right? We can have beefier and beefier computers with the same amount of power consumption and, and, uh, and, and keep up. So going back to something you mentioned before, why is 100% inspection so important these days? So in any manufacturing process, uh, the amount you inspect is kind of proportional or, or related to how mature your process is. So if you have your, if you have your process completely dialed in, 100% reliable, you can maybe get by with just checking rand, you know, very sporadically. You can do spot checks, make sure that your process is still as dialed in as you think it is, and, and that's good enough. But if, if you're having yield issues, if you aren't able to get 100% yield, then you want to have strategies for uh, capturing failures uh, as early as possible to help reduce the cost of yield failure. And particularly when we start talking about stack die, you know, if you've got 50 different components, 50 different chiplets all stacked together into one large complicated package, uh, that starts becoming a very expensive proposition to, to realize at the very end that everything didn't get assembled quite properly. And so one way that people are doing that is to just move to 100% inspection. So now I'm gonna inspect 100% of my chips, you know, because a, a common failure mode is, well, if, if your chips are too warped, and you know they they don't or you know the bumps aren't planar. You know that that is just kind of a guaranteed failure. And if you can catch that early, that's going to reduce your loss further downstream. You'd rather get, catch that loss upstream. So the exact details of exactly where to inspect and how much uh, obviously is going to be a function of the particular manufacturing environment that these inspections are occurring in. But we're seeing a lot of interest in the market in 100% in inspections of these bumps. And this tends to be a failure point and failure mode for the assembly process of these things. So if you think about this from, in terms of manufacturing where they had front end of line, middle of line, which is sort of new, and then back end of line, this is really shifting left on that flow, right? Yeah, so a lot of the back end processes, a lot. Some of these back end processes are moving up towards into the fab. Um, you know, I mentioned at one point conformal coatings are being added into the in, into the fab. These bumps are being added in the fab, um, and and so the the fabs are having to do inspections now that in the past they might not have had not have had to have done. Um, John Hoffman, thanks for a great explanation. Oh, you're welcome.